You know, it's amazing what God's doing. You know, you really don't know who you can influence just by leading your everyday life. And uh, we saw KJ talking about that today. But God wants us to go out into the whole world and share the good news. And uh, that's what KJ's doing. And that's what we're doing at The Revolution. So if you guys want to go online, check us out, therevolutiontv.com, and just find out what it means to, to have a relationship with God. And the moment you've all been waiting for, here is Jonah, i.e. KJ52. I was a very poor kid, meaning I was a very poor kid and I was the only white kid in the neighborhood. So it was like, not only am I the odd man out, I'm the odd man of the odd man out. You know, I'm a minority in a minority place. Mm -hmm. So that was tough, but I, I really just more struggled with my identity. My parents were, you know, going through stuff and split and divorced and all this stuff. So that was a big struggle, um, but never feeling like I fit in, meaning here I am in the worst section of Tampa going to a private school where these kids have million dollar homes. I go back to my neighborhood, I, no one in the neighborhood plays with me, there's nobody there. I go there and I don't relate, you know, and then I moved out to the suburbs with my mom and we just had somebody else's house and we were still poor, you know. That as a young kid kind of, it messes with your self-image a lot. Honestly, the only thing that really ever got me past that was finding out who I was in Christ, you know what I mean? What does that mean? I, I know, it's like a cool little church <laughs> slogan, meaning understanding how, how God looked at me, meaning I based how I felt on how I felt other people looked at me. If my friends thought I was a dork, I felt like that way. When I came to understand that I was a, I was a precious, special creation that God made, um, that's pretty amazing that the God of the universe would take his time out for this little insignificant speck known as Jonah Sorrentino. You know, that to me brought me to a point of just saying, you know what, even if the whole world says I'm nothing, that's not true. There was a verse I used to hang on to all the time in Proverbs that says, a man of many companions can come to ruin, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And that, man, I hung on to that a lot. You know, and, and there was another verse that says, even if my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me in. And that was like David's prayer, you know, and that, I just really, when I, that's what I mean, looking at myself the way God looked at me. Mm -hmm. And it was a process, it wasn't overnight. The one thing I keep seeing kids talk about they're struggling with is this whole cutting thing. And I can't remember, honestly, I can't remember one person I ever knew growing up that ever cut themselves. But the more I talk with kids that deal with this, it's almost like a release of the pain, meaning a lot of kids would cut themselves and they become addicted to it because it's this sort of transferring maybe the pain in your life to that pain and there's almost like a rush that, um, but I think part of it, it's more of a self, um, self depreciation, meaning you feel like you're nothing, so you begin to, instead of, you can do it one two things. You can either internalize it and take it out on yourself or you take it out on people. And I was the opposite. I took it out on people. I didn't like who I was, so if my teacher said the wrong thing, I'd freak out. But I think a lot of the other kids are just internalizing it. And I think there's a lot of pressure on young girls to conform and look a certain way. And that's been sort of a burden of mine. It's like erasing that. And, um, what would you want to share with them? Well, I have a song, it's called Four Ladies, and it's, it was my opinion, I said, I've seen so many rappers disrespecting women, it's about time that another rapper said the right things. Um, what I usually try to stress is that, um, even in the song, I said, God made you beautiful <clears throat> no matter how you look. Meaning, men and women might struggle with it differently, but it's still the same issue. It's, it's feeling like you're just not good enough. And um, I felt that same way. So I said, well, you, when you come to the same point, of looking at yourself the way God looks at you, it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what people say. That, you know. And I even say, I did a remix of the song. I said, that's why you ain't gotta have a guy to make you feel like you're worth something in your life. I know a guy who will always treat you right, who will take care of you and will never make you cry, who you can call any place, any time, whether it's middle of the day or middle of the night, and will always call you back, never leave you high and dry. Because he's so in love with you that he would give his life. And that's why, you know, that's why I break it into the song and it's just, you know, people use other things to make themselves feel like they're something. <laughs>
We've been talking with KJ52 and he was sharing about what bondage did to his own life. Like he never felt good enough, he could never measure up. And you know, the guy really did have kind of a hard time. He was the only white dude in the ghetto. But now he's turning heads of the MTV moguls and artists and he's kind of living the dream, you know what I mean? And that's the thing, I mean God, he can take you from one situation, turn it all around and uh, just make something beautiful out of something that's just horrible, you know, something that is rough. And uh, it's not just the way he grew up, but, you know, he felt like things weren't going to pan out sometimes, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, he's making it, he's out there shining. And, uh, and that's what God wants for your life. You know, he has a perfect plan for you. But uh, in order to know what it is, you got to know him. And, uh, and there's only one way to know him, and, and that's by accepting the gift that he gave to all of us. Mm -hmm. which was his son. Uh, his son came and died for us, and I'm sure you know that, uh, but you have to really embrace it. You have mm -hmm. to embrace him and, uh, and have a relationship with him and get to know him, and then he's going to start revealing things, you know, what his plan and purpose is for you. But it starts with that relationship with Jesus, and you've got to start no better time than the present. You can go online, therevolutiontv.com, there you're going to find some links, you can find some counseling links, and you can find all the information you're going to need to start a relationship with Jesus. So please shoot us an email, therevolutiontv.com. Not only are those counseling sites linked there, but we love to chit chat with you. We want to know what's going on in your life. Thanks so much for watching us today. We love you guys. For George mm -hmm. and Kat, this has been The Revolution. We'll see you later, Gator.